Okay, guys, I'm back. Just wanted to see what was going on. But yeah, I'm gonna bring my my guests in. And it's gonna happen today. So <laughs> yeah, we gonna have a good time, man. I'm really excited about this one, though. V very excited about this one. <sighs> but yeah, you know, shout, shout out to everybody who's going to tune in and stuff. It's the first time having, um, well, what I consider a hip-hop legend on my show, you know. I remember listening to Bro on the radio, and this is going to be monumental for my city and for my brand and all that stuff. You know, shout out to the viewers, shout out to everybody tuning in. But yeah, man, keep your boy in y'all prayers, man. You know what I'm saying? And support me and stuff like that. You know, subscribe to the YouTube channel, the 1804 Show Chapter 2, and everything. And, you know, just spread the word out. You know, we just, we grinding, we working. Just trying to trying to get bro up in here real quick. Okay. Man, this thing don't want to cooperate. Damn boy. Yeah. I'm excited, man. I just, I'm happy. Let's get this, let's get this, um, get this popping right now. Hopefully, let's, let some in here, man, because I'm so close to this. Let's it, so. Oh wow. Um I don't know I don't know bro. I don't know what's what's going on, but I'ma you know just keep trying it, bro. I'ma just keep trying it until it works. So but yeah, I'm I'm gonna get you in here, man. <laughs> so Okay, there we go. Oh there you go. Yeah, what up, man? That's crazy. I never had that issue before. Yeah, me either. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's good? What's good, what's man? You, man? Oh man, nothing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm cool, calm and collected, man. I just want to say, man, thank you for this opportunity, man. And you know, I've been listening to you since I was like a little kid, like in high school, man. So this is a, <laughs> this is like a, a dream come true right now. Man, I appreciate it, man. Um, man, I ain't been on this Instagram live in a minute, but shout out everyone joining, man. I ain't, I, I probably ain't seen them in a minute either, but uh, no, nah, I appreciate it, man. Um, uh, you know, appreciate the love. Way to make me feel old a little bit, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm old too, man. Like, you know, time travels, bro, and it's just one of those things that you know a lot of people just look at like as a bad thing, like aging and. It's just people don't want to become old, man. I don't know. I think it's just a gift, man. It's 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 like a a cherished moment, like when you um a kid and you listening to your parents reflect and stuff like that, and then it's your turn now to reflect. So it's one of those things that I take for um just as a humbling experience. So nah, for sure, man. I mean, um. You know, anytime, anytime you can get older, man, you know, uh, a lot of people don't get to get to 
the age that I'm at. So I'm I'm definitely blessed, man, and very appreciative. Yeah, yeah, man, no problem, man, no doubt. Um, so I wanted to ask you, man. Um, so what's been going on with you today and stuff like that? Do you and Smile still talk? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, me and Smiles, you know, we, 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 we just celebrated 20 years of the album, so we just had a little uh, brunch. Um, we all got together, a lot of people that we ain't seen in years, you know, kind of got together and, uh, and got to kick it. So that, w- that was fun. Um, you know, obviously, we all older, we got families, we got a lot of things going on in our lives, um, so we don't see each other as much. Um, but, you know, we, we definitely stay connected. We talk here and there, just kind of, kind of, you know, just keep up to date with each other. And um, overall, everybody's doing good, man. I mean, you know, um, just all just 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 grown families and just just kind of doing doing our thing, man. But uh, life's been good, man. Can't can't complain. Uh, definitely blessed. And that's good, man, because, you know, a lot of people wonder what happened to you guys. And, and you guys were like a very talented group and everything. And it's really um, I would say that. um it's not a lot, a lot of groups who stay connected and stuff like that and stay loyal to each other. So that's what's up. Yeah, much love, man. No, nah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a while since we did music. So, uh, you mm-hmm. know, we, we definitely have a lot of other things that go on. But, um, but you know, that's my guy, man. Like, you know, we shared. Like, I always tell people, I was like, there's only one other person in the world that knows exactly what I experienced for that time frame of my life. And that's him because he was, you know, he went through exactly what I went through. So we'll always have that connection. And that's my brother, you know what I'm saying, forever. Yeah. So, um, how did you guys meet? We was just both, you know, artists like in Orlando, man, just, uh, you know, small city, um, Mm -hmm. you know, wasn't a really big hip hop scene at the time here in Orlando, you know, a lot of, a lot of people from different parts of the country, you know, kind of migrate here, you know, um, it was still, in my opinion, really young hip hop scene here in Orlando. And, uh, and we just kind of all, you know, we used to all just be in the same, you know, clubs or events same shows you know um we we would you know when we started doing our 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 thing you know we would open up and do a lot of opening you know be an opening act for a lot of artists that would come through and be at different shows so you know we knew of each other through that route but um really it was uh dakari who you know produced most of our album um that pretty much put us together and brought us together and put us in a studio together and started working together and um you know, the chemistry when we started working together was just, you know, it was kind of like right off the bat, you know, first night we did like two records, came back the next night, did two more songs. And from there, we just kept doing records and records. And, you know, we didn't go in the studio thinking, you know, hey, you know, we're going to make an album or, or be a group or get a record deal. We just we just love making music at the time. And any opportunity we had to kind of jump in the studio, you know, with a producer that had records that we can get on, um, you know, we took advantage of it. So that's really kind of how it all came about. And um, and next thing you know, you know, a couple months down the road, you know, we put an album together, uh, started marketing a single and, and you know, voila, you know, like <laughs> it just kind of <laughs> happened so quick. But um, but, you know, with, with me and Smiles, we was just both, you know, just hungry. You know, we just mm-hmm. wanted to be in the studio whenever we had a chance and, um, you know, got a chance to get together and, and make records. And so that's kind of how it kind of all formulated. Yeah. And you two, like, came around during the one six and park era man which was a beautiful era and an era that's not going to be duplicated ever again <laughs> so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah man i mean we were fortunate you know i i, I mm-hmm. you know I, I definitely am um blessed to you know in my opinion you know i'm probably a little biased but i think uh you know that 2000s late night like 90s 2000s era hip-hop to me is like the golden era of hip-hop yeah. um yeah. it's when it kind of exploded you know um, really definitely became more acceptable, kind of pop mainstream. You know, before that, obviously much, you know, I love that era as well because um, mm-hmm. that's kind of the foundation. And then, of course, you know, nothing nothing against the era after that either, you know, because I, you know, I'm a hip-hop Close fan to death. So, you yeah. know, I, I still listen to all the new guys now. But, um, but you know, yeah, man, fortunate to be around that time, man. You know, uh, a lot of, you know, 106 in Park was, was, was a great experience to be able to go on that. And um, and just see a lot of those acts that, you know, now are considered legends, you know, be around that and kind of see their rise at the time. You know, it was a, it was definitely a blessing to be a part of that. Yeah. And I want y'all. To, well, I want you to take us to that first day when y'all shoot the video, man. What was what was that like? I know it was probably like 
butterflies in your stomach, like, oh my God, this is my first <laughs> video that's going to be seen all over the country. So take us through that day. So our first, um, our first video that we actually shot was uh, our first single, which is called Who Wants This from the album. Mm -hmm. um, we shot it in LA. And, um, and now it was crazy. I mean, you know, we, we, you know, we, I mean, we ain't never experienced anything like it. So, you know, we, we get there and it's, you know, for, you know, back in the days, it wasn't like everybody now could shoot a music video with a DSLR and, you know, they they got so many cameras that shoot such good quality that you can literally just walk outside and get a video done. You know, back in those days, you know, for, for that quality to be on like a BET or anything like that, you were shooting film, you know, 35 millimeter film, full set, mm -hmm. full production. So, you know, we go first day, day one, you know, we all excited, man. I mean, you know, we, we've had the meetings leading up, you know, gone over like the storyboard and, you know, kind of talked about what's going to happen, been through wardrobe and, you know, just kind of excited, you know. Um, I wouldn't say nervous. I think it was more like the anticipation, like, oh, man, like, you know, first day of school type type vibe, right? Like, <laughs> you know, you're just excited. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and, you know, we show up to set to shoot this video. And you just like, man, this is crazy. Like, you know, because you start really seeing like how many people. And then, you know, when you when you're shooting, you know, on set, you know, they call you the talent, you know. So it's like they treating you like, you know, they treating us like extra special with care. Like they don't want us to do certain things, no stunts. No, we, we need you in the trailer. You know, we want you because we can't, you know, mess up this. <laughs> Basically, we need you in the video. Like you can't get hurt. You can't be looking crazy because we need to be able to get the shot. But yeah. so for us, it was just like a surreal experience because we like man this is crazy man like you know they treating us like we special and we thinking to ourselves like well you know we ain't even nobody yet nobody know who we are you know what i mean but um mm -hmm. but now it was it was it was dope you know I, I think that was like the first time i realized like you know to shoot a three minute you know four minute video it takes mm -hmm. like a day and a half two days you know like it's crazy how many you know how long how many hours you put in to such a little bit of time but just just to get all the shots that you want um for edit um but no nah, it was it was it was it was definitely a blast i mean the first that's the first one you know the second one which became was tell me we were definitely more prepared for it you know because we kind of already went through the experience one time so we kind of showed up that one i was like okay we know what it's like now but that first one was definitely surreal man and, and it was kind of like you know I, I, we definitely ran on a lot of adrenaline because i think me and smile i don't think me and smile slept or anything like that we were just in the trailer hanging out having a good time and then whenever they call it oh you need us let's go you know like so it was it was a good time man but but definitely uh uh an experience for sure and that's what's up man and that tell me song bro like um it's it's very storytelling and you just pretty much can like especially when you experience that type of stuff like you can just really relate and yeah. resonate. And so was it like a actual an event that your smiles went through or that was just you two being creative? No, no, for sure. I mean, everything, I think, you know, for the most part, you know, I, I could definitely speak with my side and I know, I know smiles as well, but I won't speak for him. But, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, everything we write or I write is from experience, right? Like either it's it's something I've seen, witnessed, or something I've actually been through. And mm -hmm. and tell me, for example, wasn't necessarily one exact experience, um, mm -hmm. but a combination of you know the experience I had been through. Um, you know, thinking at that time I knew everything about relationships. I was only like you know twenty something years old. I definitely didn't know anything about relationships at the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know that you know just kind of going to studio. You know the record just kind of you know. A lot of it was just feeling, so you know we just kind of spoke what, what what came to my mind and um, definitely spoke on experiences, you know, up to that point as far as you know what what you know relationships were like for for me at the time. So, um, I, and I think that's why it gets across so genuinely, I guess, um, mm -hmm. to people to this day. You know, to to see people still, you know, love that record to this day, and and you know the record still does numbers to this day. Like I'm like, man, this is crazy because it's like you know it's been twenty plus years. You know, a lot of people don't even know who, who probably, who who we are. You know, like like who like who who did this song? Like they just know the song, um, because it, it brings them back to a moment and and they can relate to it. So, you know, really blessed, man. And um and like I said, now definitely definitely just feeling. So I think and that, and I think a lot of times because it was feeling, and genuine, you know, it gets across so good and 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 it, and it touches people. Oh oh yeah, man! Like it really. Touch me, man. I still listen to it to this day. And it's funny because, like, when I was promoting this episode, 
a lot of people was like, man, no, you wait, man. He ain't coming on your show, man. Like, you lying and stuff like that. I'm like, what? You know, so you'd be surprised, man. People actually know who y'all are from my timeline. So Yeah, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, I mean, I, 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 it comes around, like, every uh, every so often, like, you know, mm-hmm. someone will post a video or somebody will post this and then people will tag me on it and I'll be like, and I go look and I'm like, man, like, it's crazy how, you know, because I think, again, we celebrated 20 years since the album release, so it's been, mm-hmm. the record's been around for 20 years and for it to still get the get the love and, and, and people still, you know, playing it and it's on playlists. Like I'm, I'm really, you know, grateful for that because you know it, a lot of songs come and go, man, and and for something like that to still be around all these years later, you know, definitely, definitely dope. Oh yeah, and the nicest thing about all of that is, twenty years later, you know, you, you still good, you still happy and stuff like that, because a lot of people have this misconception of just when you make it into the industry and stuff, like all your problems go away, you know, money brings happiness and stuff like that. But I just think you just have to be a very intelligent person in order to um, be able to just live a prosperous life without the fame and the glamour and stuff like that. So just the fact that you still here, you know, you humble, you good, you know, you prospering, man, that's a good feeling, man, because Every entertainer don't have it so good, don't have it so easy. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, man. I mean, you know, uh, definitely is something that you got to know how to be grounded. Um, mm-hmm. I think for me personally, you know, I was never really a fan of the attention. You know, it always kind of made me uncomfortable at times. Yeah. Like, you know, walking through the mall, and people staring at me, like <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> Even though I know why you're looking at me, but it's like, why are you looking at me? You know, but um, yeah, you know, for me, it was never that. You know, I, I really enjoyed. You know, I enjoy doing music, you know, and I love hip hop. So, you know, being, mm-hmm. you know, making hip hop music, being able to do that for a living for that period of my life was, was, you know, super dope. But, you know, you take the good and the bad, right? Like, you know, obviously, you know, I love being on stage, love performing, love being, you know, being in the studio, creating, you know, those are the things that I love doing, you know, um, the other things just kind of come with it as things get bigger and bigger. So, you know, I think, I think, you know, obviously having good people around me, good family, good friends around me, keep me grounded. And, um, and yeah, man, I mean, you know, it, it was a part of, it was a part of my life. Um, again, still talking about it to this day is crazy to me, <laughs> you know, cause it's been so long, but, yeah. um, uh, but you know, I'm very appreciative for that, that part of my life. And, you know, at the same time, appreciative to, to be able to have done other things since then. So. Yeah. So who are your influences? Um, well, musically, my favorite artist is Jay-Z. That's always, you know, pretty much been my guy. Yeah. Um, you know, but growing up, you know, I, like I lived in, you know, I grew up in Southern California. I left there, you know, I moved there from when I was like 11, 12, moved in Jersey City, New Jersey. And then we lived there for two years before moving to Florida. So when you talk about like having influences from all over and all yeah. the different styles of music, you know, I definitely have that influence, right? Because I grew up West Coast, you know, listening to Dre. NWA, Snoop, you know, Ice Cube, you know, you can even go to like Alcoholics, you know, uh, Souls of Mischief, you know, the early days. Yeah. Um, and then you go to Jersey. I live, I lived in Jersey City pretty much 92, 93, 94 time frame. Yeah. So that's like when New York hip hop really started taking, taking it back, mm-hmm. you know, with Nas and Biggie and, you know, the whole bad boy movement and Wu-Tang and, you know, all of that going on. So, you know, I was really you know, heavily influenced by them. Um, and then coming down south, you know, at that, t- at that time when I first moved here, obviously New York hip hop kind of ran hip hop. But, mm-hmm. you know, coming down here, you know, you, you know, hearing, you know, your outcasts and, you know, your trick and Trina and, you know, the whole slip and slide movement in Miami. And, you know, so definitely influenced from uh, uh, all of that. And then, you know, being around all the different cultures, because, you know, when you, when you go to these different places, man, you realize like, Culture is different, man. People's different. You know, people talk different. People dress different. People act different. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, having that, being able to see all of that, um, definitely has a lot to do with my influences. And it's crazy that you say that because I moved a lot too. So I lived in New York. I lived in Detroit. I lived in St. Louis. So I was able to 
just witnessed a lot of cultural differences and stuff and yep. cultural differences and, and that's why I'm very um, opinionated when it comes to music because I have lived in different places so I can see why um, New York rappers are very passionate because it's just a, like a difference down there and, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I lived in St. Louis so the Nelly era and stuff like that I could get it like it yeah. was just one of those one of those moments. It just where like money came by, I, and I just pretty much can as as a grown man because I was a kid going through all that. So just as a grown man, I was just like, "Wow, this is this is crazy!" And just to seeing the um, evolution of the game now, how it's easy to you know, get a bigger bag and get um, sponsorships and endorsements and stuff like that. So yep. is, does it kind of like affect you um, knowing that you can, you can get all those things now and stuff compared to back then or it's just. No, nah, I don't affect me, it? man. I mean, my, you know, I, it, not, none of that stuff affects my day. So, you mm -hmm. know, as far as like, you know, I, I think, it, I think it's dope. You know, I think yeah. I think it's dope where hip hop's gotten, you know, because like I said, I've been following hip hop since I was young. And I remember, you know, living in L.A. when, you know, uh, Snoop Dogg CDs and Dr. Dre CDs was getting, you know, smashed, you know, because they were saying, oh, this is bad for you. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, to see where it is now, you know, is, is to me is dope. Like, you know, and, and even, you know, in, from our era, you know, it was still, you know, hip hop started kind of becoming a little more mainstream, you know, being, being even in Orlando, let's say when I first started going out for nightlife, you know, and into the clubs and stuff, you know, the hip hop club was one hip hop club. We was all at each night, you know, it was like Monday we were here Tuesday, or Tuesday we were here, Wednesday we was here, you know, Thursday we was all here, you know, because the other place didn't want to play hip hop music, you know, cause they thought it was a bad stigma. So, but now you go here in Orlando and you have to play hip hop, you know, cause that's what everyone likes. So I think it's dope. Um, you know, I think, I think you know, man, take advantage of it, you know, like uh, yeah. being able to get your music out there, you know, immediately almost, you know, through, the, through, through distribution and get on the streaming, streaming platforms, people hearing it right away. You know, I think that's, that's a game changer. Um, shooting videos, you know, having platforms to play your videos like that, you know, that, those are things that we didn't have back then. You know, like if we shot right. a video, it was going to cost a lot of money. And then at that, then you had to turn around and get it on somewhere to play it. You know, we didn't have YouTube <laughs> yeah. to just throw it on, you know, or, or, you know, your even Instagram or your own social media platforms. Like we didn't have none of that. You know, we didn't have Apple music and, you know, right. we was around when, you know, Napster was like the first stealing music, you know, it's like, Oh, that's bad, you know, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think it's dope, man. I think it's dope because it gives, you know, a lot of young guys opportunities that, you know, maybe they would never be given. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I tell a lot of young artists or, or producers or people that I, you know, consult or I'm around or and they ask me questions, I tell them all the time, like, look, man, like, you know, you can make a living making music, mm -hmm. you know, you don't necessarily have to be Drake, you know what I'm saying? But ain't nothing wrong making 60, 100 grand a year doing music. You're doing right. something you love and you're making really good mo money from it. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and a lot of people will probably be very happy with that salary, you know? So, you know, take mm -hmm. advantage of opportunities, you know, learn it, it's still a business. Um, you know, you got to educate yourself on the business side of it, you know, because it is still a business. You got to know how to market yourself. You got to know how to sell it. And, and uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm happy for these these people out here, man, taking advantage of the platforms and and and, and getting that bag, man. No yeah. hate here, man. Of course not. Of course <laughs> not. But what I mean by that was, it's it's just this battle, or this young versus old um, thing with our culture, yeah. and. And I believe just anybody who were able to get signed and able to release an album, I believe you guys paved the way for future generations to come because it's like, um, you know, y'all was doing it when everything wasn't so accessible. Yeah. So I got, I got to respect that. You know, I respect that because of the fact yeah. that it's, it's not, it, it wasn't easy back then and, you know, go do, go into radio stations to 
you know, play your demos and yeah. actually doing shows, doing contests. It's, it was a lot of work, but now yeah. it's just, you know, social media. You could just put something on a website and get views and get streams and stuff. So I give y'all nothing but my utmost respect for that. No, I appreciate it, man. I mean, you know, but I, I think, you know, even us, you know, for us, I, I definitely think, you know, every generation or every, I guess, time in hip hop or whatever has paved the way for the next, you know, but mm -hmm. that's evolution, right? That, that's how you evolve. And that's why hip hop is so big, you know, like, um, you know, e even for us, you know, older, older guys that, you know, we can still do records now because there are 40, 50 year old, 60 year old hip hop heads. There wasn't 40, 50, 60 year old hip hop heads, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Right. You know, it was still a young, young game. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, you know, so you see guys like in their 50s right now still doing their thing. Like, that's dope, you know, like, like, because the, because we have evolved and we have an older audience. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times, you know, um, I, I'm appreciative of that. And then, you know, even for me, you know, we, we, we respect the, the, the generation before us that paid away too, you know, like yeah. what they did because they, they opened those doors too and created a platform. So, yeah, man, I mean, you know, definitely think every generation helps the next you learn you know that's the whole point of it like you know you learn from the previous one you know how do you do better now you have you know other platforms have opened up doors have opened up um you know take advantage of it and you know the next generation it even has a bigger platform you know and they're going to learn from this generation you know uh, so that's that's kind of how hip-hop has you know that, that that's how hip-hop is going to continue to evolve and um and i think that's important so you know i, I a friend of mine once told me he said, he said, you know, you got to keep up with what's going on or you become a dinosaur. And he said, and you know what happened to dinosaurs, right? <laughs> I, said, I said, yeah, you right. Yeah. I was like, yeah. He's like, so, you know, you can't really, you know, as, as an older head, I guess I'm an older head now. I can't really look at the younger generation and be like, oh, your music is this. Or, you know, I, I, I'm very, I, I like what I, you know, I love what I'm seeing. You know, I love the fact that, you know, it's, it, it's so many people keeping hip-hop going you know um and you know the cream still rises to the top you know like you know so um yeah. it's, it's like the independent major conversation that everyone always wants to have it's like well they're both good it just depends on you know your situation what works better for you you know um you know for the most part all the artists that you see on the top charts on billboard they most of them are major artists you know, so, you know, but that doesn't mean that being independent doesn't make sense for you because you can make good money for living independently. You just might not be him. And that's, okay, but you should be okay with that, you know, so. Um, now, I, lo I, lo I love the young generation. I like a lot of stuff that's going on now. Um, you know, happy that I was around in the time that we were around because I love that generation, you know, probably the most. Again, I'm probably a little biased when I say that. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also really appreciative of the generation before us that, that paid away. Yeah, that's good, man. And I'm also a, a artist too, man. I wanted to um, see you some of my work and just to see if you would like it or not. Because yeah. I'm working on a mixtape and stuff like that. Um, I already have two out, so I'm dropping my third mixtape because I'm kind of like in an installments right now and doing collaborations and doing like compilations with all the local artists from here and from out of town too. So I want you to just, you know, just check it out. Cause I got my own theme going and I'm just trying to start a label, man. Cause I'm all about just expanding and venturing off into different things. Watch it settle for one where you can create multiple possibilities yeah, and opportunities for people and stuff. Cause I'm just want to just help my city and help people who I find potential in and, and we been just getting along great, man, because everybody just wants to be a part of something positive these yeah. days. So, but yeah, yeah I'm going to send sure, you, man. I'm going to make for sure, sure. I send, send it through, man. <laughs> send it through, man. I'm down. I'll check it out, man. Yeah, it's dope too, man. Um, also, man, what you been working on now, like as far as like you have a single out or you working on a single? Nah, man. Um, I don't really do too much music no more, man. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I coach. Uh, I actually coach high school basketball. That's kind of like my thing right now, coaching basketball. So I'm a head coach at a high school out here in Orlando called Cypress Creek. 
And um, I also coach travel ball with Southeast Elite, which is an Adidas 3SSB circuit team. So, you know, that's kind of been my, my thing. I've always loved basketball. You know, that was kind of like my sport growing up, you know, and then, you know, basketball and hip hop kind of hand in hand. Um, so, you know, having the opportunity to be able to kind of be involved in that and um, at the same time, just work with the youth and, um, you know, hopefully mold them into fine, you know, good young men as they grow up. You know, it's been really rewarding and I've really enjoyed it. So that's that's kind of been my thing right now. Mm -hmm. I haven't really done much music. People always ask me about it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm retired and never going to do music again. <laughs> but, you know, I think, you know, if the if the opportunity that makes sense presents itself and, you know, sometimes I do get the itch and, you know, want to get back in the studio. Like it, sometimes I hear certain records and it's like, man, like, man, it makes me want to go do something, you know, like, <laughs> right, like, right, uh, right. like I think the God did record when I first heard that, I was like, man, this is, this is dope. You know, like it makes you want to kind of like, I was like, man, it makes, I told my, my boys, I was like, man, it makes me want to go back in the studio and do something, you know, but, uh, haven't really got fully there yet committed. So, um, you know, nothing, nothing really going on musically for me right now. Um, as far as like events or shows or anything like that, there's nothing set in stone or booked or anything right now. Um, but I am open to, you know, doing events if it makes sense. You know, some people will reach out to me sometimes and it's like, does it make sense time and wise and everything like that? But, you know, I'm really locked in on this basketball thing right now, man, my basketball journey. Oh, that's, that's cool, man. You know, yeah. be there for the kids, man. That's all good, bro. Yeah. Anybody who take their time out to get back to the kids, man, it's a number one in my book. So, appreciate yeah, it, man. man, I um really enjoyed you, man. I really appreciated this opportunity, man. You just don't know. Like, I'm just <laughs> psyched. No, I appreciate you, man. <laughs> um, I haven't done, I haven't talked a lot actually recently. So it, it, I was, when you reached out, I was like, yeah, man, let's, let's cool. Let's chop it up, man. I, like I said, I, I actually look, I was like, man, trying to connect on this live. I'm like, I, I did an IG live, you know, so I know how this works, but now I'm looking crazy. Like I'm the old guy that can't figure out how to get on <laughs> IG live. Like what is, what is going on, man? I'm like, Teddy Riley, this man, I'm like, I don't want to be all that, man. But, uh, it is but no, I really appreciate it, man. And, um, you know, just, uh, Appreciate the time and, you know, anytime I can chop it up and, and, you know, share my experiences with anyone, man, I'm always down for it, man. So I appreciate you. Oh, absolutely, man. You know, I can ask you everything because I was ex pretty much trying to get a part two from you. So, but yeah, <laughs> part two is going to be a lot better, man. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm still, for sure. I'm still um, nervous because, you know, I'm humble like that, man. I, nah, I, nah, I just, man. <laughs> I'm a fan, so. But yeah, I appreciate man, you, uh, man. Appreciate you too, man. You and you have yourself a wonderful day. We you too, man. Much love. Appreciate everyone that joined too, man. Love. Yeah, thank everybody. Peace. All right, peace.